Welcome to This Week in the PNFL. I'm your host, Mark Hill, and along for the ride is Mitch Grawl and Dean Chambers. How are you doing, guys? Very good. Fantastic. All right. How was the vacation? Good time on vacation? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Short lines and, uh, you know, lots of lots of sugary food. That's there you go. Time. And for this week's show, we have a very special guest. We have with us the Washington Redskins head coach, Jerry Seymour. How you doing tonight, Jerry? I am doing fantastic. All right. All right. Yep. As, uh, you know, as our, our uh, oh, I can't think of him now. Uh, Texas ah, Longhorn ah. fan. Um, oh, crap. I'll think of it. All right. All right. All right. It'll come back up sooner or later. That would uh, be Matthew McConaughey. Thank you. Ah. I should know that because I'm a Longhorns fan too. So I couldn't couldn't figure yeah, it out. Did they, Do what? Did they give any free shots with all that sugary food? I'm sorry. What was that? Did they give any free insulin shots with all that sugar? Oh, no, no, they didn't. They served up. They just said you're on your own. No. Yeah, there's no medical coverage at Disney World. No. Okay. Oh, all right. So, all yeah. right. Let's go ahead and jump into this here. So, uh, we just finished up week seven. And heading into week eight, uh, there's a lot of things that we're going to go over. Um, Jerry is here with us to talk about uh, the latest item that was posted on the forum regarding, um, you know, it's I guess you can never get enough of the reinforcement regarding the coaching profiles and um, the dangers of doing copying. Um, you know, we, I think we've all been guilty of it at one time. Um, I know there was a couple of examples that Jerry saw and uh, that's been talked about in the league a little bit. So we're going to try and get Jerry to talk about a couple of those and uh, maybe some things that he ran into in his time in the league. So, And I think we're going to try and touch a little bit on where we are at at the halfway point in the league. So hopefully we're going to try to push through this stuff pretty quick and get through it. So, uh, Well, do remember, uh, Mark, that uh, next week is the actual uh, halfway point. So we probably oh, have extra yeah. time to... Well, yeah, we have extra time for the uh, Jerry segment today. Okay, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. That's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm easy on that. So, All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing kicked off. First game on the list, we have Kansas City going in to play Minnesota. And um, I think somebody might have been having too much sugary foods. As Minnesota walked off with this one, 31 to 24. Uh, we're going to get all three into this, but we're going to start first with Dean. Well, I think the big thing here is that Drew Locke went to Minnesota to rehabilitate his career, and he did pretty well. He passed 17 for 28 for over 300 yards, and uh, the Minnesota running game kicked in another 115. They played pretty Solid balanced offense, had almost 33 minutes time of possession. And uh, that was enough to overcome Kansas City that was fairly competitive. But, you know, Minnesota won by a difference of a touchdown at home. So that's important win for them to keep keep the Vikings in contention for the for a playoff spot or maybe the division in the, in the AFC West. So it was pretty, uh, pretty, pretty good win. I'm sure Barney was, was pleased to get that win. Yep. Jerry, uh, as, as our guest, we're going to come to you next. Uh, what did you witness on this? Well, I think pretty interesting. First thing you notice right off with that game, turnovers. When you're behind in the turnovers, it's hard to recover, right? You give people short fields, you stop your own um, drive. So there was definitely a you know, fumble and a pick there on the KC side. And then it was some big plays on Minnesota. I think they hit, you know, they had a couple short plays that went long, and then they took a big shot on fourth down. And I think, you know, when you really look at that yardage that Locke had, he got a huge percentage of it just on three plays. So I think really hitting those explosive plays and the turnovers um, was just too much for Kansas City to overcome. Yeah. All right, Coach. What happened to your team this week, Coach? Yeah, well, I mean, they got beat. Uh, I, I think that uh, that's the first thing that uh, we'll, that we'll name the obvious. 
Well, I mean, Jerry hit it. I mean, yeah. Um, I'm going to have a trouble this year uh, with turning the ball over, but probably even more generating turnovers. Um, you know, the, you know, we've, I've had a lot of quarterbacks that have, uh, and this has been another one, that have had, you know, big days on me. And the big piece of that is I'm, I'm not, I, mean, I think I've had one interception all year long. So i got to figure something out there on that pass defense because I've historically been pretty strong at that. So obviously i got to figure that part out. But, um, yeah, there's uh, two or three huge plays uh, that uh, rack up about, you know, 100, I think 100 or close to 150 yards uh, for Minnesota. And, um, you know, my team offensively played fairly well, but, um, yeah, couldn't over, overcome those turnovers. So, you know, uh, we'll, we'll come back at it this week. All right. Next game, we have New York Jets hosting Las Vegas. And I guess you could say Vegas definitely put up a fight. Uh, went in there for a battle. Definitely beat the spread, but wasn't enough as the Jets ended up taking this one 30 to 25. Mitch. Yeah, this is one that Jerry might reference uh, in the middle section today. Um, you know, uh, this is uh, this was uh, if you watch, had a chance to watch the game, uh, uh, you you may have uh, noticed some pass uh, razzle dazzles uh, in some unusual uh, scenarios for Vegas. Uh, I think they generated about 200 plus to almost 250 yards on uh, pass razzle dazzles, um, um, and so uh, you know you, you can't subtract that out, and it might have been a much different game, but. Um, you know, New York has still found a way to, to uh, you know, generate some points and uh, come out with the win uh, regardless. So, um, you know, good, uh, good luck for uh, New York. All right. Dean, what do you have? Yeah, I've been seeing that Las Vegas has been struggling, and I had picked the Jets to uh, win and cover this one. And, you know, the maybe it was in part due to those plays that were mentioned, but the Raiders were surprisingly competitive in this game, and I wasn't expecting that. And I guess with the help of a few of those plays, they ended up getting a total of 467 passing yards, only 22 yards rushing. So the, they, uh, they, only, they only had six rushing attempts. They didn't even try to rush much against the Jets. And one of the running backs had three attempts for 33 yards. You know, maybe – the Raiders would have been able to be a little more balanced if they'd run the ball a bit more, but they didn't. They both had 467 yards passing, and uh, but you know, the Jets still held on and won. All right, Jerry, what what what'd you find? What you? I mean, you uh, they mentioned it earlier, so uh, what's your commentary on this? Yeah, I think not to take too much from the middle section, but yeah, there were definitely a few um, profile issues here. I think it's probably likely due to adjusting the trying to be a little more pass versus more balanced this week, probably from Vegas. But we'll talk about that later. I will talk, though, even though they gave up 400 yards, I still think Vegas, you know, they did pretty good on third down against the Jets and stuff, right, which um, the Jets' offense is pretty prolific. Yes, it does have a tendency to be a little more explosive and not quite as efficient as some other offenses in the league. But um, Vegas played okay defense, too, besides the other issues on the offense, even giving up 400 yards. Again, controlling third down gives you more opportunities on the field to hit some of those plays they were hitting. And so, but beating the Jets is difficult no matter what, right? Yep, definitely. Yes, it is. Next game, we have Washington going out to the West Coast to play Anaheim and walked away with a victory 38 to 13. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with Dean on this one. Yeah, I think on this one, the Rams tried some things that they thought would give them a chance to beat Washington and maybe even took a few chances here and there. And uh, some of the things they tried didn't work too well. I mean, Haskins completed 50% of his passes, not too bad. They ran for 114 yards. But uh, the Washington offense was pretty pretty solid against their defense. And uh, – the score, well, maybe the score is a little more lopsided than the stats indicate. And uh, a couple interceptions thrown by Haskins with zero touchdown passes probably factor into that as well. 
So this ended up being a pretty, pretty comfortable win by the margin of victory for the Redskins. All right. Mitch, what do you got? Yeah, the big thing here was, uh, you know, Washington continues uh, to be ball hawks uh, against the pass. Uh, I think your, I think your team leads the league in interceptions or in the top two uh, in interceptions uh, this year, uh, the exact opposite of, uh, of my team. And so obviously that helps create those um, short fields and additional opportunities and, and your offense uh, definitely took advantage of that and, um, you know, you know, shut down, shut down the, the Rams. I think this is the Rams, I think what, fourth loss in a row after starting three and oh, so, um, you know, I'm sure uh, second half of the year, um, uh, Coach uh, uh, Suge Knight will uh, want to, you know, do a few things differently. Yeah. Jerry, get your commentary on the game this week. What was it that you, what was it that you did with your team this week to be successful in beating Anaheim? Well, I think it's kind of what I put in some of those posts we've had on the forum in the last week. I kind of stayed true to myself. And yeah, I did. I did look at Anaheim. Anaheim plays pretty good defense. They even played pretty good at, um, this week, right? That's really their thing. They've been shorting games, playing defense, running the balls, and keeping the games close. So I really looked at some things going in before the week to try to limit their running game a little bit. Go ahead and make sure I got them off the field. They threw a little bit different in some situations that I didn't expect, but um, obviously I got those turnovers, as Mitch said, and that allowed me to get some short fields and stymie a couple drives. And then once I got the lead, of course, that changes some of the play calling, right? And with that different play calling, my offense just kept rolling um, as I countered some of the stuff. I did get a, I got a hint from somebody to take a look <laughs> that I won't name, right? Mm. Uh, might be on the phone call here just to look at it. And it, it was true. You t I took a look. I think um, similar to my own defenses, Anaheim can be a little susceptible if you throw the ball down the field a little bit. So uh, I made sure I put some plays in it that stretch it, even on the early down, just stretch the field just a little bit and was able to see it on some of those passes. But they, Anaheim is a very good defensive ball club. Okay. Next game we have New York going in to play Los Angeles and um, they ran the boards on them. They hung 45 on them by winning this game 45 to 20. We're going to shake this up a little bit. We're going to start with Jerry this time. Yeah, this game was a little bit of a surprise. I mean, the Giants do have kind of a wide open offense. They've been that way all season. Um, you know, you've got to sit back and just stop, stop that, that long passing game they try to do. And, but this week they were a little balanced, right? They came out fairly balanced. They didn't get the ball thrown down the field as much as typical, surprisingly. Um, but again, it, it was really just defensive side of the ball. It's hard to explain when your quarterback goes out and throws five picks, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the Giants had super short fields early, got the big lead, and it was just that was just way too much for the Los Angeles to be able to overcome just way too much with all the turnovers. And it allowed the the Giants just to sit on the ball, run it a little more than they normally do and um, finish out that big win. All right. Mitch, what do you got? Yeah. I mean, it, it's actually um, kind of a miracle that the game was as close as it was. We had that, you know, Los Angeles had the, the seven turnovers um, uh, there. Um, but yeah, you know, they did generate. They did, uh, you know, generate a couple from, from, uh, from the Giants. But um, yeah, this was a, obviously a, a very strong performance. Probably the best performance from the Giants uh, all season, as far as both sides of the ball um, out there. It's still very much an offense that's uh, centered around Barkley. Uh, but you know, they, they definitely mixed in more of the the Jones passing game. But still the all that being said, yeah, the generating those seven turnovers, obviously it cost uh, Kaiser his job. And, you know, I think uh, Dean got a seventh round pick for a player to help play this now for Los Angeles. So, um, yeah, definitely a lot of repercussions after this game. Yeah. Dean, what do, you, what do you have, Dean? Yeah, as well as a fourth round pick. Yeah, this was a big surprise to me. I had. I had picked the Chargers last week to win and put a, a lead pipe lock on it. And the way my lead pipe locks are going this season, I'm I'm going to start getting bribed by 
by some of you folks to drive me to put the, the lead by block on your opposing teams. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, those turnovers basically decided the game, and this could have been a very close game, maybe even a, a Chargers win if it weren't for the turnovers. Of seven turnovers. I mean, five interceptions and two fumbles that were lost. And apparently Deshaun Kaiser was personally responsible for six of those. He threw the interceptions and I guess fumbled away one of the fumbles. Right. Um, and you know, as, as Mitch mentioned, it led to uh, him getting fired. And that led to the, the trade, bring Dak Prescott to, to LA to be the, the new starter for probably this season and maybe one or two more. So yeah, this def- game definitely consequences. I can't, <clears throat> I can't fault Steve for uh, making the change there. I mean, it reminds me of the change I made with uh, the equally horrendous performance that Justin Fields had in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. The turnovers and in that case, a lot of sacks. Mm. Okay. Next game we have Pittsburgh hosting. The Dean Chambers led Atlanta Falcons, and they ended up taking this game 37 to 20. Mitch, we're going to start with you. Yeah, I, I tell you, the uh, Pittsburgh has been um, very impressive uh, this year. Uh, it is definitely a, a change in the approach that uh, you know, Donovan has had with his team. Uh, I know they're uh, a lot more balanced on offense, and you know, just another week where they put up 30 plus points. Um, I think, uh, you know, I think I played them twice, and they had put 30 up on me twice uh, as well. So, um, you know, they're definitely right in the mix. Uh, they're in the AFC West, and it's going to be interesting to see. You know, now that I've already played them twice, it's going to be interesting to see how they do against the, the second half of the season because. Um, uh, like I said, been uh, been impressed with their uh, with their uh, sophomore season so far. Okay, Jerry, what do you have? Yeah, I think it's a pretty interesting game. I think both teams struggled on third down, so it's interesting how many points were scored. But again, we look back something we discussed earlier. Pittsburgh had quite a few more explosive plays. They they got some passes down the field that got them in a position to score, so they didn't have to be as efficient on on third down atlanta and we kind of talked about this off air atlanta can be a little volatile play call and they really went to running the ball this week and i'm all about running the ball and being physical Uh, but if you're going to run it that much got to be better on third down you've got to move the ball uh, because that means you're having to get more first downs to get points and so you have to be way more effective when you're doing that and I just think they just weren't. I think they didn't run the ball as well on second down and on third down and just did not get those third down completions. And even though the Atlanta defense really was pretty good on third down against Pittsburgh, they still gave up those explosive plays. And, and, and again, if you're going to be, if you, you got to be careful um, on those defenses and not give up those long passes and let, pe- let people get easier scores. Okay. Yeah, yeah. To your point, it looks like um, Prescott, his longest completion was um, 13 yards uh, compared to Pittsburgh being 39. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Dean, what happened? Talk to us. What happened? He only threw the ball a total of 14 times in the entire game with eight completions. But the big plays in the other side were due to the the defense or what the was of defense it wasn't very good obviously mm. and uh, you just can't give up 37 points and give up that many big plays and be in the game even if even if the offense was better right the defense is just uh major liability this season i mean we saw that in the game we watched in which washington scored 49 points in this defense we saw the Giants score 30 something points in both of the games, which one was a loss and one was a win. And uh, Detroit, even with the nature of their offense, still uh, scored plenty of points against my defense. Mm. So 
it's something to work on and it's partially number of factors, including some factors that can't really be, you know, you can't, you know, like I said, one, one of the, I think I said it on one of, or I don't know, the last week I said one of the message boards, you know, our system, you can't just, um, you can't just go into the transfer portal and get a whole new starting lineup. You can make trades, but you know, that's sometimes tough to do. A lot of teams right now are focused and coaching mode and not really in the mode of looking to make trades. So that's not always easy either. Right. Okay. Next game we have Jacksonville hosting Detroit and Jacksonville walked away with a 27 to an 11 victory. Dean, we're going to start with you. Yeah, this is kind of surprising because, uh, I had expected Detroit would win, and Detroit had traded for a couple pretty good wide receivers and a new quarterback from Las Vegas. No, I would have thought the passing game would have improved, and maybe it's partially play selection because Trubisky went 20 for 35, but only 148 yards. You know, that's that's an average of 3.6 yards per pass, and as we know, that doesn't get the job done. The running game was decent. Detroit ran for 100 games. But, you know, they, they came up with 11 points. They scored a touchdown and a two-point conversion and kicked a field goal. Colonia Van was pretty solid against a young but very talented Detroit defense, and as a result, they win the game 27-11. to 11. Okay. Mitch, what do you got? Yeah. Well, you know what? There is a pulse in Jacksonville. I think this is the most games they've won in three seasons, and we're only you know seven weeks into the year. So uh, I'll just say uh, you know hats off to to the you know coach down there, Matt, and uh, glad that he finally has read the uh, profile rules and making some adjustments based on his comments on the message board because it seems to be paying off. So. Uh, you know, we'll see how uh, how it goes the rest of the season. All right, Jerry. Yeah, I think um, Dean hit it, hit it on this one. I think the play selection on Detroit on offense, especially with the passing game, I think it left a little to be desired. It, they really everything they were able to complete was really underneath. They didn't get anything down the field, and so they were pretty good on third down. But they just begin it with no explosive plays at all it's more first downs you have to get. So even at 50%, it can hold your scoring down a little bit. Um, and we'll discuss some of the Jacksonville stuff again in the middle segment a little bit. Um, a few issues there, I think, with some with some play calls. <laughs> but, it, you know, definitely, I think Detroit will, needs to go back and look at um, their offense a little bit and make sure they're getting the ball down the field. Okay. Next game, much closer. I think this one was much closer than a lot of us thought. Uh, it was Indianapolis hosting Chicago and only separated by two points as Chicago ended up winning this game 22 to 20. We're going to start with Mitch. Well, I tell you what, um, I definitely did not expect uh, the game to be this close. Uh, still, I uh, know it's kind of hard to kind of fathom them out because, uh, you know, Chicago won the turnover battle. You know, it wasn't like there was a bunch of uh, turnovers or, or craziness like that. But, uh, you know, hey, uh, maybe uh, Indianapolis has got their formula back from, from last season. They can, you know, control the ball and keep the other team, you know, uh, you know, that, that their offense off the field. That seemed to work for them last year. We'll see if they can. Keep it going uh, the rest of the season. Okay. Jerry, what do you got? Yeah, I think actually this was pretty much a straight-up game. I think any came in there, they played rather um, balanced-wise. And, again, kind of like what I was posting on the board, they did what they, what they do and played their game. And so I think they showed that they can be uh, a match from some other teams. So I think they may have some – you may have some problems in the AFC if we move forward if they can keep this level – of play up again, you know, they even were behind in the turnover battle and still managed to win. They ran the ball really well. They were effective throwing. They got a few explosive plays and on, and on defense again, 
It kind of contained most of the explosive plays for Chicago, not all. And they played them pretty straight up. It was, it was a very good game. Okay. Dean, what do you have? Yeah, Indianapolis was much stronger than I expected also. And, you know, some weeks they've kind of not performed up to expectations and other weeks definitely overperformed. And I didn't expect them to be this strong against Chicago and they played good balanced offense and uh, played pretty good defense and they almost won this game. So, you know, they, they play this way against other teams. They should be pretty competitive in the second half of the season. All right. As we are coming down to our last two games for week seven, uh, next game that we have on the list is New Orleans hosting interdivision rival San Francisco. And New Orleans ended up winning this one 17 to 10. We're going to start with you this time, Jerry. Yeah, I think this game was about what I expected. Because, um, you know, New Orleans is, they're one of the better defensive teams in the league. And defense, kind of Rich kind of talked about that in, in a post here recently. Defense is something I think everybody overlooks. Everybody focuses on the splashy offense. And New Orleans plays solid defense every week, right? And so no difference here against the uh, 49ers. They came out, they played great. And again, they run their, their offense, their balanced offense. And it was just a, a low physical ball, low scoring physical ball game. And New Orleans with their defense came on top again. Okay. Mitch, what do you got? Yeah. Well, similar to what's been mentioned in some of the other uh, game uh, assessments, this one here, right, you look at the third downs and the number of third downs that each team had. You know, San Francisco, you know, had 18 uh, third down uh, attempts. Uh, New Orleans had 16, uh, which, you know, kind of goes back to what Jerry was saying before. You have that many third down attempts. That means there's probably some wiggle room uh, in what you're doing on first and second down. And I, and I find, have found myself in doing my own assessment, you know, uh, generating too many third downs uh, as well. And so it was like in New Orleans, you know, they were, let's face it, they 70% third down efficiency, um, but yet, you know, still didn't even gener didn't generate 400 yards and, you know, only generated two, two touchdowns. So uh, there is something to be said about, um, you know, trying to, uh, you know, earn a first down before you get the third down, uh, I think, uh, to, to help move the scoring. So. That's just cover my thoughts. Okay. Dean, what do you got? Yeah, this is about as I expected. Richard Sportsbook had, had the Saints favored by six and a half, and I picked them to win and cover the spread, and they just did that by winning this game 17 points, which so maybe a little bit more than a of a defensive struggle than I might have expected. But, you know, as Jerry mentioned, the Saints have played solid defense. And uh, it definitely served them well, and they scored enough offense to win and cover the spread. Okay. Last game of week seven, and uh, no longer winless. You had Seattle going into the New England territory to take on the Patriots. So it was an East Coast, West Coast thing. And Seattle happened to uh, sneak out of there with a 30 to 25 victory. We are going to start with Mitch on this. Well, I just want to say, you know, about time. So congratulations uh, on, on this. And uh, I know Mox, you know, he called me after this game. He was ready to quit after losing. Uh, I talked him into staying in the league, so you know, don't, don't leave guys, Mox. Don't leave you know, Mox. You know, Mox is staying in the league, though. You know, he just he couldn't believe that he lost uh, to Seattle. But uh, you know, hey, um, you know, with some good things there. Obviously, very efficient in the passing game, not for a ton of yards, but uh, you know, it was efficient. Uh, running game was strong. You know, definitely had the two uh, two headed monster with uh, Harris and Carter. And, um, you know, uh, New, New England's kind of fallen on some hard times here these last uh, few weeks. It's, um, you know, after that hot 4-0 start, they, they've started to come back to earth for, for sure. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I think uh, someone's posted on the forum that, you know, Seattle's only like two games out of a 
playoff spot. So who knows, Mark? Maybe uh, maybe, maybe this is the start of something big in Seattle. Yeah, you know, I can, you know, my, my upcoming opponent this week, you know, that's, uh, you know, he's no big deal. I've, I've beat him before, so it ain't no big deal. But, you know, we'll talk about that a little bit later. <laughs> Dean, I'm going to save him for last. Dean, what do you got? Yeah, I think the big factor in this game, and it's related to what uh, I believe Jerry spoke about on the forum, the execution. I think uh, the, the offense was very effective here. I think uh, your your game plan caused some very good plays, and you're – very effective in the running game, getting 170 yards and efficient, as Mitch mentioned, on the passing game. It was good, good balanced offense, and uh, you played some pretty good defense against the struggling Patriots who, you know, tried hard and were competitive themselves, but you finally, uh, you know, broke the whatever you call it and uh, got on the winning side. So I think uh, going forward, working with – what you're working with here and continuing to improve. We should see some more wins by the Seahawks. Yeah. I know in the middle segment, we'll talk about some of uh, the things that uh, that I spoke with Jerry about um, off air. So I think that'll come up as well. I mean, it's not, it was a good win, but it wasn't um, as, as I would have wanted it. So, um, and as for Mox out there, my, my Canadian brother, don't quit, don't leave. You know, it's a it's a brotherly rivalry because, uh, you know, I talk with him, you know, quite a bit. So, uh, good guy, Jerry. I'm gonna let you finish, huh? He's in, but he doesn't have as many ten lost seasons as I do yet. So. Yeah, well, he, I know he has less than I do. So I'm way less yeah, than hey, I do. So. Just give him time, Dean. Just give him time. <laughs> Jerry, <laughs> we're gonna let you end this one up. What What did you see? Yeah, I think, again, this was another fairly evenly matched game. I think turnovers, again, paid a, played a big role, but uh, Mitch hit it hit it right off. I mean, the efficiency on the passing game for Seattle, um, you still struggled a little bit on third down, but you were efficient. Hit some bigger plays on third down, got kept some drives going, got the ball down the field, which shortened a couple of the drives um, in conjunction with those turnovers. It, it was actually a pretty solid effort on both sides of the ball. Again, a tight game, but turnovers, well, or hurt you. And it wasn't just it wasn't just true turnovers, right? There were two picks and two fumbles. Um, the two England fumbles didn't get um, recovered, but fumbles always, you know, you're not gaining yardage on fumbles and things, so they always set you back um, on the drive and put you in a bad position after the fumble, right? Yeah, definitely. So... Well, you know, I'll stay because it's like Hotel California. You can check out at any time, but you may never leave. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. Quitting is not allowed anymore. Well, I, I remember one time Mitch had told me too. He says whenever there's a, a a fumble, even if you don't turn it over, it basically can chalk it up as a drive killer. So you right. can't, um, you know, you can't allow those to happen because, you know, even if a, a, a fumble can be considered almost closely, you know, almost close as a turnover, especially on a third down or something like that, or it's a wasted down basically. So. All right, so as we finish up the week seven games, we're going to go ahead and pivot into our main topic. Um, There was something that was posted on the forum. We talked about a little bit in the games uh, about the um, coaching profile. I know that we've talked about it several times on the show. Uh, We've had Richard on here talking about it. We've had Charlie in the past um, talking about it. Um, And I, I can't think of how many different coaches we've had on here a couple of coaches that we've talked about it, but um, we're going to go ahead and jump into it again. Um, and I'm going to have Jerry lead off on this because I know a lot of it has to do with um, the copying plays over from one to another or not really paying attention on the play calling scenario or the way the scheme is set up. And the game does have a little bit of a glitch on that if you're not careful. So, um we're going to start with Jerry on this and then we're going to jump to Dean and then we're going to have Mitch finish it off. So um, go ahead and take it away, Jerry. Yeah. So this week, uh, my game plan, when I game plan, I read logs. I like reading the logs. And so when I read them, I've been here forever. So 
any play call that's that would be improper to the rules i noticed right away it just jumps right out at me so when i do those i will hit up owners and say hey look you might want to take take a look at this and this maybe you did something in your profile typically and it's the reason i posted on the forum for attention to detail um there's been several times this season and a little bit late last season we've had it looks like a little increase and um, the number of errors being put into games. And so while our rules can be a little difficult, I think they're actually easier than it seems when you when you really realize first down is generally left, second down is generally middle, third down is generally right. And, you, you know, just with our numbers, the 147 is be your lefts and be on first down. And then 258 is second down with your middles. And then your right stuff will be your sixes and nines and threes. So... I think it's I think it's simple once you once you get in your mind the the play names and stuff and how they look to to spot them. But when I do look, I go back and look at the game and stuff, and I see and like so this week, a couple of the bigger errors, it was really visible that these teams really adjusted their play calling for the week. You could see them going heavy pass away from a more balanced approach from the week before. Um, so my assumption when that happens, based on own errors over history with myself, is people were probably doing some heavy copying. And so when you copy the issues you have there, you might, you might forget to move a button, move the switch and you end up might be trying to do something when it's less than five minutes, but you forget. And it goes back into the over five minutes and you didn't intend to call it. And that's usually one of the big ones, right? We can call almost anything you want with less than five, whereas over five, you can't. And so I, people copy those in there erroneously. I'm sure, I'm sure that's a big part of it. And just when you make massive changes to your profile, those are the kind of things that are going to happen. You also have what I call the copy click demon. What that is, if you make a copy, if you copy a set of plays and then you scroll around and come to another set you're going to look at or something, what will happen is you will um, you won't realize it. You'll click into one of the situations. It will change that situation only to what you had copied before. Even if it's 30 or 45 seconds later, it'll just put that in and you won't realize that you made a copy on first down that you did perfect. And then you're looking around at second down to see what you're going to adjust and you click into a situation, it puts those first down plays in there. And so that happens too. So my point in my post was just if you, when you're right before, before you're going to zip, zip up your files and send them in to Rich and, and Charlie, uh, easy thing to do, open your profile, go through first and six to 10. All you get, it's 21 situations, right? You don't have to worry about the goals. Most people don't hardly adjust goal line stuff, right? Usually adjust in the middle of the fields between the fives. 21 times on first and six to 10. Just 21, just actually click through them. Just glance at them real quick. Make sure they all look good. Um, if you're a little bit anal like I am, you have them all in the same order. So I always have my situation on top is run. Then I do my short passes, then my medium passes. So for me, it's just changing the weights of them, generally speaking. And so when I page down, if I see some font change, I know right away it's something going on, right? Because it, it jumps out at you. But either way, you just click through there. Then you go to second one and two to five. You only need to do between the fives. So you're really all together, each profile, you're talking, scrolling through 100 combinations, basically. That's it. It takes 10 minutes, and you can really go through that offensive profile and have looked at 85 90% of it and made sure you didn't make a copy error. error. Um, usually there's just only like one error, one or two errors. And I know that's just a click error or something from week to week. They're, they have very little effect on the games. This week there was definitely, um, in a couple of cases, there was definitely higher effects in the game. So bottom line is we all want to just um, play each other mono and mono. And even though nobody's doing it on purpose at all, um, we still want to get those wins and feel good about them, right? Yeah. Okay. Dean, what'd you see? What's your opinion? Yeah, I think I, I, I generally do the same thing as Jerry as RSM runs short and then medium. And uh, I think what I usually try to do too when I'm planning on changing up the profile is earlier in the game planning process, I'll get them based on scouting and based on thinking about what I want to do in this game. I'll <laughs> change my profiles if I'm going to change them up earlier and then work on the game plans and then in the process of watching a couple of practice games if i've made an error like that if i suddenly like one time i was doing this several weeks ago and i saw that i was calling a pass short middle on first down it was a copy error and that's not good because 
in addition to the fact that it's not according to the rules, it's also not good strategically to call some of the plays that I load up on second and like focusing primarily on second and five to call those in first down. So the process of watching the games is, is key to noticing profile errors, even the more obscure errors, even things like if they happen to come up, not stopping the clock with 23 seconds left or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a couple issues that are kind of a weakness if you find yourself, and I've been there before too, where you watch a game and you think, well, my offense isn't scoring enough. I need to like, you know, kind of put the pedal to the metal and go more aggressively in passing. So if you're, you're sitting there on a Thursday night or Friday night and you're making adjustments in your profile like that as kind of near the end of your game planning process, that's a situation where you can have profile errors or copy errors and you could easily be submitting a set of PPPs with issues in the profile that will come up in the game or might be flagged or, you know, Charlie might mention it or Rich might mention it or, you know, as Jerry said, you might get an email from Jerry saying, by the way, you know, you called this on second five. Did you know that that might be an error in your profile that you need to take a look at? So I think part of this is the things that Jerry was talking about. And part of it is just taking a look at what our game planning process is. And, and uh, I know in the advice that, that Rich gave many seasons ago that, before he would even start the game planning processes of like simming games, putting you the game plans, he decided on what his profile was, his profiles were going to be that week. If he kept the same profiles and made adjustments, but it's like the profiles were done. And then after that, he did his sims and built his game plans and stuck with the, you know, stuck with the profiles for that week that he decided to work with. And that's probably good advice. And like I said, if you get to the point where you do that and, you watch some practice games near the end of your game playing process. If there are any major errors in there, you can catch those and fix them. Okay. Mitch. Yeah. Bring um, it home. What, what do you got? Yeah. Well, a few things here. I mean, I think what Jerry and Dean have said is, is all right on the money. Only a couple of things I'll add is that one thing that I have done here for this season uh, and you know I've done a little bit in the past but probably put a little more time into it in the off season uh, this year is basically when I say cre creating multiple profiles um, you know for offense and defense um, not not necessarily so I can come in one week and do a you know all runs one week and all passes one week but you know going ahead and making some multiple profiles, so I don't have to, or potentially not have to copy and paste as much from week to week because I've already got some of these profiles built out, you know, to make to help with adjustments. And so, for example, right, you know, if um, you know, let's say that you're you're a coach that you know typically you want to run the ball 40% of the time and pass it 60% of the time, you know, on those early downs. Well, maybe you create three different profiles where you know you've got your runs in at 40 percent but maybe one profile you've got you know past shorts and past mediums at 30 and 30. maybe uh, another one you have it at you know past shorts 40 and past mediums 20 and vice versa past mediums 20 past shorts i'm sorry 40 and past shorts 20. um and that way you know if you see that you, you want to make some slight adjustments to the types of plays that might get called based on who you're playing you know, you'll already have that built out, kind of ready to go. Yeah, you might still have to make an adjustment or two, uh, you know, for that week, but it might not have to be as wholesale change from week to week, which would eliminate, you know, rushed copy errors or things like that because you already got it built and it's clean, uh, you know, kind of going into it. Uh, the other thing I'd say, and I think, Dean, you were getting to this, you know, you know, if, if you do sim games to practice, which I think everybody does some version of that in, in some form of way, make sure you actually watch a game or two, maybe even three, uh, just watch them play out in full or, or you know, at least a, a chunk of those games in full. That's typically where I'll catch some of this stuff, you know, where I'll, you know, watch a game or two and, um, you know, kind of like you, Dan, I'll be like, wait a minute, why am I calling a, you know, pass you know, medium right on first down inside the red zone. Oh, crap. But for some reason, 
you know, the the scenario for being up by three has me. Yeah, I think that like the 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 copy paste demon that Jerry's talking about. For some reason, I probably clicked on that and it copied my third down, you know, plays versus being my first downs. And so you go in, and, you know, I make a note of it. You know, my coach's note, and I'll go back in and adjust dust it after I finish watching the game. But uh, you know, uh, or you know, so that's just one way I do it. But I think. You know, to help avoid some of those rushed, you know, copy paste errors and maybe even save you more time from week to week, go ahead and have you um, uh, a couple of three profiles that have those adjustments already kind of made, um, already built in, so that um, you don't have to worry about all that copy and paste in as much during the week. So that's my um, that's my ten cents. Okay. All right. So hopefully you guys got a lot of info on that i really don't have anything to answer i I defer for this topic i defer to the guys that have the experience and uh i think we have three of the best on the show right now to talk about that so um is there any final comments you guys want to add now that you've uh heard from each other anything you guys want to add to that no, I think just on my end i was going to say i'm similar to mitch there at the end which is stuff i alluded to online again in the forum is that I don't think you need to be switching your profile up as much as people think. I think we have to remember from game to game, this, we put the weights in there for what we're play calling, but the game is never going to call it exactly that way. It's going to air a little bit either way because it's the coin flips each time, right? And you're weighting the percentages, but it's still coin flips. So I think one week running 35% of the time, this week 40 and this week 45, I don't think changing those up is the bigger deal. So I think mm -hmm. when you're attacking your attacking your opponents, I think you look at key situations, right? Um, what are they doing in certain key situations? And I think I, I attack people, try to attack people more with the play calling. I mean, the actual mm -hmm. plays themselves, right? And you watch yeah. what people like to do with plays. And so I think the tendency to go in and have to do more copying and make bigger changes, I don't think you need I don't think it's needed to be done as much as it seems, right? Yeah. I think your style of play can, yeah, that profile can obviously is going to dictate the types of plays you call and when with that variability, like you said, that the CPU will throw in there on you. But really the, the your style of play can really be dictated by the plays that you have in the game plan. And so that's probably where more of the adjustments should be made with just a tweak or two on the profile. Yeah, and I think sometimes if you get a little bit too radical with what you do in your profile, you can kind of succeed and then not really succeed. And to some extent on offense, my game was an, an example of that. I more heavily emphasized the running game, and the running game did very well, but the passing game suffered at, at the expense of that. So it was it's too far in favor of the running, and it wasn't very balanced, and overall the – the offense wasn't as effective as it could have or should have been. So sometimes we kind of beat ourselves by getting getting too far in what we change in the profile in situations like that. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking back a, a few weeks ago, I had uh, made a tweak uh, to my profile trying to you know, generate a little bit different result on, uh, on the offensive side. And it, it, I just couldn't do nothing but laugh because the adjustment that I, or the uh, the percentage of call play call that I um, adjusted up to call more, I think that play type got called less than any other time this year. I'm like, <laughs> why do I even bother? Why why bother? <laughs> why yeah, <I> even bother? <laughs> I had that in the game the last week or two. I was in the goal line and I threw all three downs and I. That is not me. You guys all know that. I'm like, what is the like, game don't, doing? Don't you I'm just want the quarterback sneak every time? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's that coin flip part I'm th we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it, I, a similar thing. Uh, I had something where I was trying to double what I uh, had normally done with a certain play type, and darn if it almost cut it in half. But I'm like, oh, yeah. did I put it in wrong? <laughs> What's going on? All right. Oh well. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna put a pin in that for now. I'm sure we'll probably come back and 
visit that again somewhere down the line. Uh, we are definitely moving right along and getting a little bit long today, but that's all good. We're having a good time here. So as we are going into week eight, um, the halfway point, uh, it's got some good games uh, scheduled for this week. And um, it's going to be real interesting to see what you guys have to say. So we're going to get this one started off. Uh, each one of you guys has a lead pipe lock. Mitch's stuff was a little bit skewed because he wasn't available. Uh, yeah, and, I heard James picked for me last week, so I don't trust that. Yeah, Bloomer picked for you last week. Uh, he did pick against KC last week, so... Um, which yeah. is probably which was a good thing. So I yeah, he I he picked for, for he that, picked right? for Minnesota. Yeah. He picked Minnesota. So you got to win on that one. So uh, yeah, I got to give you that one. So uh, yeah, betting against your Pete, but get your own team, huh, Pete Rose? So I know, I know. <laughs> so as you guys know the deal, everyone gets a lead pipe lock. We're even. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and give Jerry a lead pipe lock. I think when we have our guest on, we need to have a little little setup for them as well. So everyone's getting a lead pipe block this week. So starting off with the first game on the list, we have Jacksonville hosting the Jets. Uh, Rich Sporting Books is giving the Jets 13 and a half. We are going to start. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let the guests start out. We're going to start with you, Jerry. Yeah, I think, you know, Jacksonville, obviously, from the conversation this week, they're trying to get a little more active in game planning. And I think it's a bad I, – I think getting more active and adjusting things and facing the Jets is not a good idea. I do not think that's a good idea at all. So I think the um, Jaguars are going to learn some stuff about themselves this week. And I think, I think the Jets win and cover here. Okay. Mitch, what do you got? Yeah, I um as much as uh you know it's been nice to see Jacksonville kind of get a pulse this year, I think they're gonna flat line against the Jets. So I'm 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 taking the Jets this week. Okay. Um, Dean, what do you got? Yeah, I agree. Jacksonville has uh, been improved lately, but uh, they're being taken to school this week, and the Jets are gonna win and cover. Okay. So, everybody is picking the Jets. Hmm. I think I will uh, not rock the boat, and I will go right along with you guys as well and pick the Jets also. Next game we have uh, San Francisco hosting the Colts. They are giving the Colts six and a half. Mitch. Yeah, I mean, this is an interesting one. Uh, you know, typically, you know, San Francisco has solid, you know, plays solid defense. And, you know, Indianapolis has had a tough time, you know, scoring uh, uh, this year. Um, but I, I think they've been playing playing a little bit better, a little more pulse. But I'm going to go with uh, Indianapolis. I'm going to take them to, uh, to win Ooh. on the road this week. Okay. Interesting. Um, Jerry, what do you got? Yeah, I think I'm going to even go a little further than Mitch here. I think while the 49ers are always solid, right? You never have to worry about them. Um, they are, again, as I posted, they are what they are. The Colts looked pretty good last week. They, they play pretty well. And I think, you know, this is where that lead pipe, lead pipe lock stuff comes in. I, I got a feeling Indy's going to not just, they're going to win outright. No problem. I, I think I think six and a half is way too much for this. So I would say Indy in a lead pipe lock here. Oh, okay. Indy with the lock. Wow. All right. Dean, what do you got? Yeah, I think I think when you look at these teams, the the arrow is going down for San Francisco. I think they're kind of losing momentum in this part of the season. The arrow is definitely going out for Indianapolis. So I'm picking it up. Colts win on this game as well. You're picking Indy on this one as well? Absolutely. Mm. Interesting. Interesting indeed. 
Huh. Everyone's picking yeah, Indy on you wonder this. Wonder about one. that line that was set this week, don't you? No one no one is giving Charlie a chance. Interesting. Hmm. Well, you definitely need uh, San Francisco to lose more. Yes, I know. That's why I'm picking Indy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you need them to lose. Hey, so look, I had I kind of had to let Indy. it sit there and kind of hover in the air for a little bit. So, so Next, you can you can stay two games out of contention. Yeah, uh huh. I gotta close that gap a little bit. All right, so. Next game, we have New England that is really hosting the Chargers, and they are giving the Chargers eight and a half on this one. Um, we are going to go ahead and start with Jerry this time. Yeah, this game is kind of interesting. You got Patriots are kind of searching for themselves a little bit here, and then you got the Chargers who have got to be as mad as all get out, right? They traded quarterbacks. They're angry, so they're going to come in here ready to fix this thing. But I'm going to tell you, I, I think the I think the Chargers should win the game, but I don't know that they're going to cover that eight and a half still. I think they're mad and everything, but I, I think the Patriots are going to find a little something and keep it closer to that eight and a half. Okay, so you're going with L.A., but it's going to be a nice close one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dean, what do you got? I think you're going to see the Chargers on fire more than we've ever seen since the Super Bowl. They're definitely going to be fired up, and uh, they're they're going to be they're going to be going all out in this. Um, this is the one to to put all your bets on and take out your third and fourth mortgages and all that other stuff that Mitch likes to say. It's a lead by block. Chargers are going to win and cover the spread. Okay. Wow. Mitch, well, what do you, you do? Take out that second mortgage. Remember, it will be at eight or nine percent interest rate. So you better hope they win big. So, um, <laughs> I will. Uh, uh, I tell you what, with this game here, I, I see New England. If, if this was a boxing match, New England is in the corner, just getting pounded right now. And I, I think uh, Los Angeles, um, despite the you know kind of embarrassing loss last week. I think they're going to knock out the New England, and it, it, it might uh, it, it might be the beginning of the end for the Patriots season. So I'm going with Los Angeles. Yeah, I say max out your credit cards to bet on this one, no matter how high the interest rate is. Max them out. <laughs> max them out. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, I'm You're going to take advance. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I I see both teams. Um, Definitely have something to prove. I think Mox right now, he's in the mindset of he has to prove that um, this downhill slide thing is um, has to stop. It's He's going to have to put the brakes on it. Um, I think Steve is going to say, hey, look, I'm still relevant. So it's a question of who wants it more. Um I think I'm gonna actually I'm gonna go against the norm. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with New England. I think Ooh. New England I think New England's gonna come out there and uh, yeah. come with an upset. I think he's gonna try to find that form. He's gonna go back and look at what he did earlier in the in the season and see if he can find a way to replicate that. So I'm gonna hey, take New Mark, England on uh, this one. Do, do, hey, hey Mark, uh, do you re did you realize that New England uh, lost to Seattle this year? Yeah, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I think I what I think is Mox is going to get kind of ticked and going to be like, you know what, the heck with this. Um, he's going to be like, you know what, I had this. Was it? I think it was last season he was doing the same thing and then he just fell off. And I think he's going to be like, no, I don't want to let this happen again. I, I think he's going to find some kind of way to pull it out. So I'm calling for the upset. All right. So All right. are you are you locking that? No. Okay. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Next game, we have the Giants hosting Minnesota. They are giving Minnesota seven and a half. We are going to start with Dean. Yeah, I realize the Giants did well last week and caused a lot of turnovers, but I think Minnesota is uh, getting to the right side of things with a lot of what they're doing, and they've rehabilitated the career of Drew Locke and uh, – I think Minnesota wins and covers the spread on this one. Okay. Mitch, what do you got? 
Well, you know, you look inside the numbers this season, Minnesota is winless on the road at 0-3. This game is being played outdoors in New York. But I don't think it's going to matter. I think Minnesota's defense is going to shut down uh, Barkley and the Giants, and they're going to score just enough to win. So I'm going with Minnesota with the upset. Hmm. Or the road, uh, road win. The road win there. All right. Jerry, what do you have? Yeah, I think I see this one different. I think this is another time when I'm not sure I'm not sure that line is right. I think when you look at the numbers and stuff this season, Mitch talks about Minnesota, both on offense and defense, is really they are struggling on third downs. They're one of the worst teams in the league on converting third downs. They're down just below the middle of the pack and, th- and thus um, giving up first downs on defense. And New England's, I mean, New York's more middle of the pack. I got a feeling the New York, the NFC East is going to rise up a little bit here. I think it will be a little bit of an upset here. I think I'm going to pick the Giants in this case. Okay. Uh, I have to concur with you on that. I think uh, I know Mitch loves riding that Minnesota bandwagon unless he's playing against them. Um, But I think New York is um, going to come in and pull out the upset. So I'm going with the Giants on this one as well. Next game, we have Anaheim hosting Pittsburgh, and they are giving the Steelers seven and a half. Mitch, what do you got? Uh, I put this down as the lead pipe lock this week. This will be my lead pipe lock. You've got the uh, surging upstart Pittsburgh team. Uh, they might. I think I, I have to go back. They've scored 187 points this season. Uh, you know, not trying to be silly, but I, that might be more than they scored all of last year. I mean, Pittsburgh really struggled scoring last year, um, doing much better. Um, Anaheim, at the same time, you know, they're uh, one of the tougher defenses to score on. But I think Pittsburgh is definitely going to uh, pull this thing through and uh, keep that Anaheim losing streak, uh, you know, going, uh, moving up to five. So, lead pipe lock, Pittsburgh. Okay. Mm. Interesting, interesting. Jerry, what do you got? Yeah, I I see this one just a little bit differently. Um, I think Pittsburgh's probably going to win the game, but I think it's going to be closer. The Anaheim defense is really, really good. Granted, Anaheim has trouble scoring. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, they're struggling trying to find themselves on the offensive side of the field. But the defense is really good. And so, I, I, yeah, I, I think you got to go with Pittsburgh, but I don't know that they're going to cover. Okay. Dean. Yeah, I'm not riding on the Rams train this week, and I know what Pittsburgh is capable of doing this season. I think – I think they'll um, find a way to, to uh, score against that, that Rams defense, and uh, I think uh, I think the Steelers will win and cover this game. Okay. Um, I have to agree with all of you guys. I think that, uh, you know, Shuggy had a good start, a great start. You know, uh, definitely surprised a lot of people. Uh, when they first started up this season, but I think their teams are starting to tune into them now and find their weaknesses and on the team. And um, as you guys said, um, the scoring has been one of those things that um, has been struggling. And I think Pittsburgh, they can put, put up the points. So I'm going with Pittsburgh this week. So Next game, we have Kansas City. Hosting Vegas, and they are giving KC nine and a half. Jerry, we're going to start with you. Yeah, I'm not sure what to think of this game. Um, the Raiders really got out of sync last week. They really came out and threw the ball all over the place. Um, I, I think this week they're probably going to go back and be a little more balanced, so we should see more of um, that balanced offense out of them. But, you know, with it, with them obviously looking like they're searching for something on offense. I think you got to go with the Chiefs here. I think the Chiefs a win. I think that line is probably about right too. Game should be a probably about nine, ten point game with the Chiefs pulling it out. Okay, Dean, what do you got? 
Yeah, I think if the Raiders are going to uh, tone it down a little on the passing game, that would be good for the Chiefs. And I, I agree with Jerry that line is about right. I think I think Kansas City wins and covers. Okay, Coach, what your boys going to do this week? Well, I mean, this is the worst Kansas City uh, defense that I've had uh, in my what twelve seasons back with with. Uh, in, in the league, uh, at least get point wise, um, can't get an interception, can't generate any turnovers. I'm last in turnover differential. You know, Baker Mayfield is, you know, trying to carry the team on his back. He's on pace to have more touchdown passes uh, than any other season, but also already exceeded his last two years of interceptions. I don't see how it's possible to win this game, but um, I'll, I'll take the Chiefs. Quick question for you, Mitch. You want to trade defenses with me? Well, we're about the same statistically, I think. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have given. Well, you have given up sixty more points to me. I'm looking at it now. Okay, now I'll keep my defense for now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next game, we have Detroit hosting Atlanta, and they are giving. Detroit four and a half on this one, Mitch. This, I, I, can I just say I have no idea. Um, Atlanta's lost three in a row. Uh, I know Dean it promises they're not in a fire sale. They're not tanking for Tua or anything like that. Um, uh, Detroit doesn't score a lot, so that might be good for Atlanta with their defensive problems. So, I'm going to go with Atlanta. Why not? Let's go with Atlanta. Okay. Jerry. Yeah, I'm like you, Mitch. This is an interesting game, right? we got the old Thorazine Bowl back, and you're, <laughs> and, you're, and you're looking at this thing, and the Falcons have been giving away some of their better bets. The Lions have actually been – you know, I, I was wondering if they're getting off their game plan and, and lacking a little patience and picking up a few vets because, you know, they're in the playoff fight and they're trying to get over that um, hump there with that. Ah, I mean, four and a half is interesting. I, I think Detroit's probably going to win the game, but, man, this game seems so even. It's crazy, right? So I'll go with yeah. Detroit. Ooh, yeah, it, it really does feel like a pick em kind of game. Yeah, yeah it does. All right. Coach, what you got? I think it's been three or four seasons since I've heard a reference to the Thorazine Bowl. That's that's definitely an old school reference there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's good defense. Whether my team can play defense or not, it's 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 been a struggle. Maybe some of those younger players can step up and uh, <laughs> step up. I'm going to call for a close win here, but it's it's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. Okay. Um, I know you guys said it was just definitely a close game or it, on paper. I think it's much closer. Um, I think it could have easily been a pick em game. Um, but I will say as Mitch likes to talk about those hidden, uh, hidden attributes within the players, um, thus far this season, my lead pipe locks have been hidden attributes because I think, as I go back and check, I do believe I am undefeated or I haven't suffered a loss in my lead pipe locks at all this season. So I'm going to take this game and I'm going to put my lead pipe lock on Atlanta to win. So you have an extra boost right there for the lead pipe lock. Don't, uh, don't break my streak. This is the only this is the only good streak that I want to have this season. So uh, I'm going with you Atlanta as a lead pipe lock. You know you had to trigger Mitch by mentioning the Q rating. Mm-hmm. I know that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Next game. Uh, any you want to say anything? You want to say anything about that, Mitch? Wrong person who I think you got the wrong person who believes in the hidden rating. I think that's Dean. You're, you're trying to think. <laughs> Okay, next game, we have New Orleans hosting the Cardinals, but they are giving the Cardinals eight and a half on this one. Um, Dean, we're going to start with you. 
I know the Saints are very good on defense, but we know Chicago is excellent on offense, and Sam Donald has proven he can cover up anyone's pass defense. And uh, I think Chicago wins and covers on this one. Okay. Mitch. Yeah, I mean, both teams are hot. Uh, you know, Chicago on a three-game win streak and New Orleans on a four-game win streak. You know, um, New Orleans has already beaten Chicago once this season, 24-21. Obviously, the tight game, uh, you know, I uh, think of the second week of the season in Chicago. Um, that said, I think they actually might give uh, Chicago a little bit more motivation to uh, make sure they get that season split. So, uh, I'm going to go with Chicago. Okay. Jerry. Yeah, the Cardinals are kind of an enigma to me. You know, they're they're the over the hill gang, right? They're the ones that are going out and acquiring every um, vet in the league. Have probably the deepest, strongest roster in the league um, overall by far. And it's interesting that they struggled a little times putting points on the board against a few teams, not just New Orleans, right? Um, so. It's not what everybody thinks normally to look at Chicago. Oh, they're putting up 30, 40 points on everybody every week. That hasn't been true this season. Against some of the a few of the uh, more competitive teams, they haven't. And so they're kind of an enigma to me. I think that line might be a little big again. I mean, I think you've got to favor Chicago. Um, it's hard to believe um, the Saints will beat them twice. But the Saints play very good defense. I just don't think this game's going to be as high scoring as as people think it is. So I'll pick Chicago, but I think it's going to be a little closer than people think. Yeah, take, right. take the under. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to concur with you guys as well. Um, I would take the under, and I'm going to go with Chicago. I'm going to keep this one simple because I'm looking at our time. <laughs> Last game of week eight. I guess you could kind of sort of call it the trash bowl, the trash talk bowl, because it's going to get started here next. Um, I would classify this as the David and Goliath. The last time these two teams played, David beat Goliath and was puffing his chest a little bit. So um, I think David is going to go for a repeat as we have Washington hosting Seattle. They are giving Washington a huge 14 and a half points. So um, we are going to start with Mitch. Well, I remember that game last season. And, yeah, those last couple of minutes was definitely uh, interesting. Uh, you know, I, some would argue that the only reason Seattle won that game is because the, uh, the safeties for Washington, their hidden ratings apparently – uh, you know, were that were high on choking because they tripped or something there at the very last play. But um, I, th I think I think Washington uh, keeps that seven-game winning streak going, moves it to eight, and um, takes care of business at home this week. Okay, Dean, what do you got? Well, number one, uh, I think I can pull some strings and get you both hooked up with some Thorazine because you might need it. But, uh, I think Washington is going to play very strong in this game, and I think Seattle is going to do so as well. And it's just simply going to be a tough, close battle between the two teams. And I think uh, I think the Seahawks are going to pull off an upset here by one or two points. Oh, okay. Didn't expect that one. Jerry, what do you are, got? Are you changing your lead pipe lock, Dean? <laughs> I use that no, I don't want. I don't want the curse. Say, I don't. Are you no, it now? I don't you want. It? No, if if he does that, he needs the lead pipe lock Washington, because he's already said his lead pipe locks are curses. So he can change it and give it to Washington all day long. I'm good with that. Well, what am I like one and six in lead pipe locks right now? Yeah. So you yeah, you want you want, to, you want to move that lead pipe lock to Washington? No, no, no. I'm I'm second. <laughs> With the Chargers. You're keeping that curse on the Chargers, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Jerry, what do you got? Yeah. So um I think it should be an interesting game. I think the Seahawks are a little better than their record looks, right? Um play pretty decent and solid on both sides of the ball. But I still think, unlike a lot of people in the league, I think talent matters. I think um barring the rain dance from Rich and them in this game and having some heavy rain, which 
seems to plague Washington in stretches here, and the Redskins aren't very good in that thing. I think if we have some nice dry weather, we should be okay. You know, we've already game planned. We're pretty much done with everything, about re- ready to turn it in um, and be done with it this week. I, I, I expect the win, but this is the PNFL, so anything can happen in weeks to week. But good weather and everything, I don't know that we'll cover 14 and a half, but I, I'd be – Let's play this way. You're going to have to score 30 points to win. And I just don't think that's happening. Whoa. Okay. Well, well this is the PNFL, which stands for probably not for long. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Well, well, I will say that Seattle, you know, in their, in the, you know, if you look at the, you know, the trends here, they are 1-0 and o in their previous one road game. And uh, being that this is in Washington, you know, you never know, but uh, yeah, I, I think Washington's gonna pull this out. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it will just be an honor to be able to be on the same field as this team. It will be an honor to just be able to go up against such a wonderful, outstanding, top tier coach in the league and uh, present something that I have. You know, what I've worked up with and. Uh, I'm just multiple Super Bowl champions. uh, I'm just, you know, multiple Super Bowl champions. And I, I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just honored to be there. I'm, I'm gonna try my best not to be in awe of his presence and his aura as you see it on the field and with those players. But, uh, you know, I'm going to go with Seattle and, uh, we're just going to try to stay focused on what we're, what we're doing and we're going to have our shades on. So his aura does not blind us in our coaching staff, but I have to go with Seattle. But um, it's just going to be an honor to be in the same stadium with him out there in Washington. Go Hawks. You can be passing those things up before the game like Coach Prime. Yeah, <laughs> going to be doing all well, that. Well, you know, so. just like the Washington Monument, they already have a statue for Jerry outside the stadium. So. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's just going to be an honor to be able to, uh, you know, occupy the same space on the field as him and uh, – you know, we're just gonna go out there and just just do our best and play our game. <laughs> so full of crap. Yeah. And uh, see, if, see if they can score more than seventeen. Uh, what do you mean? I'm so full of crap. What do you mean? It's. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you got to be like Coach Prime. You say we're coming. We're coming. Uh, no, that, that'll yeah, be that'll so be safe. Well in the last five weeks, yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll be that well yeah, that, Giants, yeah. That kind of that, that kind of grew stale. Yeah. That kind of grew stale on him. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Giants made that comment early, and you know, so it's like, yeah, keep on coming. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So. All right, guys. Uh, we went through quite a bit. Quite a bit here. Um, we have a lot going on that we played this week, and um, hopefully you guys enjoy the show and everything that we have going on over here. So as we come to wrap this up, I definitely want to go ahead and thank Jerry for coming on to the show. Uh, definitely we are going long, but I think there was some information that we really had to get out there to you guys. So um, I thank Jerry for coming on to the show this week. And providing his input and expertise. So as um, we come to the end, we're going to start with our guest. Any final words that you have, sir? No, I just thanks for having me on the show. Um, fun to be here. And, you know, I'll see you on the field this weekend, right? All right. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm going to be honored. I'll make sure I bring my shades. Dean, anything you got, sir, before we head out? We play the games this weekend. We're after this weekend. We're going to be halfway through the 2043 season. Yep, definitely. All right, Mitch. Final words for you. Take us home, Mister Disneyland guy. Yes, yes. Uh, I encourage everyone to go out to the forum. There are some um, interesting uh, threads and conversations going on. I know that uh, Rich has posted um, kind of a, a feeler post around salary caps and what we may or may not uh, like to do with a potential salary cap back in the league. So go out there and make your voice heard. Oh, and before you say it, oh, and before you say it, double check your profiles, guys, including me. So double check it. All right, Mitch, go ahead and finish up. 
yes, double check your profiles and then let's get it.